Hello, welcome to St Anne's Church. My name is Richard Westford, I'm the team vicar at St Anne's and thank you for joining in this service of worship from St Anne's. Uh, our church building is closed but the church is very much alive and open and we're still gathering for worship and seeking to follow Jesus in every way that we can. In our service today we'll think about how Jesus prays for his disciples. There'll be different parts led by different people, songs, a reading and a time for prayer. Wherever you are, please join in and may God draw you close to him today. I'm going to hand over now to Sheila Bott, who's going to lead us in the first part of our service. As we begin our service, let's take a moment to pause and be quiet and remember that God is with us. Loving Lord, bless the place where we are. Let your love be here. Fill us with your peace and let your joy be here. Fill us with your grace. Let your light be here. Fill us with your power. Let us know you are here. Fill us with your presence. Let your Holy Spirit be here. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Again. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And now our first song, which if you have a mission praise is number 400. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us. So over to Jennifer and Gerald. In this next section, Stella Hawthorne is going to lead us into a time where we can say sorry to God and receive his forgiveness. And now a time for saying sorry to God and receiving his forgiveness. I invite you with me to think about our life and our worlds in these prayers. And I will lead a phrase and Chris will lead a response. But first we have a time 
of quiet. God our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sins, for turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world around us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the God of love bring us back to himself, forgive us our sins, and assure us of his eternal love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. John and Pauline Bird now sing Jesus shall take the highest honour. It's mission praise number 378. That's what I say. to you, all honour and 
blessing and power belongs to you, belongs to you, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. A special prayer for today, the seventh Sunday of Easter. Risen and ascended Lord, as we rejoice at your triumph, fill your church on earth with power and compassion, so that all who are estranged by sin may find forgiveness and know your peace. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. Tony Martin now brings us a reading from John's Gospel. Good morning. The reading today is from John chapter 17, reading verses 1 to 11. Jesus prays for himself. After Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come, glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had before the world began. Jesus prays for his people. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the word you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Our talk today is brought to us by Keith Hayward. Good morning. I'm Keith Hayward. I'm one of the retired ministers in the Burntwood Chase team based at St John's in Chase Terrace. And it's my privilege to be able to be a part of your worship today. During this period of lockdown, my wife and I have tuned in each week to this act of worship from St Anne's. And I'd like to take this opportunity to say what a great job you're all doing. And thank you. So, how's your prayer life? If you were to ask me that question, I think the honest answer would probably read my, like my old school reports often did for most subjects. Try as hard but could do better. A recent public survey has revealed that one in five adults pray, despite saying that they're not religious. According to the poll, just over half of all adults in the UK pray, and they are increasingly likely to call on God while engaged in activities such as cooking or exercising. Although one in three people pray in a place of worship, and a third pray before going to sleep or waking up, others combine prayer with daily activities. One in five pray while doing household chores, 15% pray while travelling, and 12% 12 pray, 12 pray during exercise or other leisure pursuits. However, only just under half of those who pray said they believed that God hears their prayers. 
four in ten say that prayer changes the world while a similar number say it makes them feel better our reading today from John chapter 17 gives us a pattern for our prayer life and is often returned referred to as the prayer of Jesus and in this prayer Jesus gives us an example that we can follow so if you have a Bible handy grab it now and turn to it uh, in it to John chapter 17 as we look at it together in the 26 verses that make up the chapter the main focus of the prayer is one of unity as Jesus prays four times for unity against those amongst those for whom he prays in verses 11 21 22 and 23 he prays that they may be one as we are one. The prayer is split into three parts. In verses 1 to 5, Jesus prays for himself. In verses 6 to 19, Jesus prays for his friends. And in verses 20 to 26, Jesus prays for his church. So let's consider each in turn. First of all, Jesus prays for himself. At the end of the previous chapter, chapter 16 and verse 33, Jesus has ended his teaching with a victory shout. I have overcome the world. It was a cry he would later echo on the cross when he proclaimed, it is finished. His work on earth was about to end, so he resigns himself to prayer. And the first of his approaches to this prayer is to pray for himself. Now I know that many find difficulty in praying for themselves. After all, doesn't it seem a bit selfish to pray for ourselves when the needs of others always seem far greater? Well, this is where Jesus sets us an example of how to pray for ourselves. It's all too easy when we do pray for ourselves to offer God a shopping list of our needs. But notice that when Jesus prays for himself, he asks that in everything, in all that he does and says, he might bring glory to God. We read in verse 1 that he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son, that's me, Jesus, that your son, that's me, Jesus, might glorify you. It's not so much a hands together, eyes closed approach to prayer, but a hands open, eyes upward attitude of praise. Lord, in all things, may I glorify you. What a great way to begin our prayers by asking God to show us how to bring glory to him. Secondly, Jesus prays for his friends. Jesus often prayed for his disciples. He prayed for them before he chose them. In Luke chapter 6, we read that he went to the mountain and continued all night in prayer. He prayed for them throughout his time with them. In John chapter 6, he departed again to the mountain, thus indicating it was a recurring incident. He prayed for them at the end of his ministry. In Luke 22, we read that I have prayed that your faith may not fail. He prayed for them here just before his arrest in John chapter 17. And he prayed for them later in heaven. Both Romans 8 and Hebrews 7 says that he makes intercession for us. I found that so encouraging that Jesus is praying for me as he prays for all his disciples today. And with this he sets us an example of how to pray for each other. Even if we feel like prisoners in our own homes right now, if we feel we can't do anything for anyone, what we can always do is pray for one another. And don't be afraid to tell people that you're praying for them as a sign of encouragement. 
And if you find yourself distracted when you pray alone, then phone a friend and ask them to be your prayer partner, albeit over the phone or by one of the internet means, Messenger, Skype, WhatsApp, Zoom, FaceTime, so many ways today of keeping in touch and encouraging one another. And then thirdly, Jesus prays for his church. He prays now for, uh, for future believers, for you and for me. His church right here, right now. And he prays three times in this section that they may all become one. Praise God, we've come a long way in my lifetime to, demol to demolish barriers that once held God's people apart from each other. Denominational barriers, barriers of churchmanship or traditions. And although there are still things that we can't always agree with on our churches, I believe this prayer of Jesus, that they may all become one, is achieved despite our differences when we focus our lives on Jesus and make it our aim to glorify him. To help us do that during this coming week, I wonder how many of you have heard of the Archbishop of Canterbury's prayer initiative during this 11 day period from Ascension to Pentecost. It's called Thy Kingdom Come. In its fifth year now, it's an idea that encourages us to identify five people who we would like to see come to know Jesus and pray for them by name every day as we pray for God's kingdom to grow here on earth. Prayer resources and more information are available on the Thy Kingdom Come website and are also available through a downloadable app. I commend it to you. And in addition, I wonder if every one of us during this coming week could join together at 12 noon each day, virtually of course, in our own homes, and say the Lord's Prayer together as one body in Christ. And when we reach the phrase, thy kingdom come, or your kingdom come, whichever version you prefer, just pause and mention those five people that you're praying for by name. So may the Lord bless us as we seek to further his kingdom by our prayers for ourselves, for those around us, and for his church worldwide. In the words of Jesus, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, so that they may be one as we are one. Have a great and prayerful week. As we respond to what we've heard from God through Keith, we have some music now played, played by Esther Allen. Uh, and it's the music to the, the hymn Faithful One, which is number 825 in Mission Praise. But I invite you just to let the music be part of the response. God's faithfulness, God keeping his promises, as we think about what we've heard from Keith and about God's faithfulness and his love for us.
In each of our gathered and glued services, there's normally some involvement from the children in the church, and this is no exception. And in this next section, we'll hear a little bit uh, about what the children have been up to, see what they've been uh, producing, and hopefully it'll help inform our response to all that's been going on. So thank you to all the children and young people who've done anything in preparation for today's service. Let's see what they've done for us. Terry and Angela Smith are now going to lead us in a statement of faith, an affirmation, an underlining of what we believe as Christians. We now come to a time in our service when we declare what we believe. We join together to underline our faith in Jesus Christ with these words. At the end of each phrase, the response is, we believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? We, we believe, believe and, and trust, trust in, in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? We, we believe, believe and, and trust in, in him. him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God, and makes Christ known in the world? We, we believe, believe and trust, trust in, in him. This is the faith of the Church. This, this is our faith. faith. We, we believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Our next song is There Is a Higher Throne. It's Mission Praise number 1116. And Rose and myself will be leading this part of the song. Do join in if you know the words. Strength and 
Chris Hawthorne will now lead us in our prayers of intercession. Thank you, Chris. Let us spend some time in prayer. Lord, we bring before you our community and the world. We pray for those who care and support members of our community. We hold before you those who clean, the refuse collectors, support workers, social workers, those who are looking after the imprisoned, doctors, nurses, and all those who work in the NHS. We pray for care workers who are working in nursing homes. And we pray for teachers and support workers, those who are looking after our children. Lord, we hold before you especially those individuals in our community who feel weak, ill, those who are vulnerable, frightened and exhausted. We ask that you will give them comfort, hope and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders, Lord. We pray for those who are leaders of countries and those who are leaders of businesses. We ask that they may seek to be just compassionate and kind to all those for whom they are responsible. Give them the courage and strength to uphold their responsibilities whilst being fair and showing that they care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And let us now join together in faith and say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Please join with me and use whichever version of the Lord's Prayer you feel most comfortable with. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Most of our services when we meet in St Anne's Church have an opportunity for us to pray for God's peace on one another. And Brian and Sue Golding are going to say some words asking that God's peace will flow to each of us even though we're not together. The peace, the peace of, of the Lord, Lord be always with you and, and also with you. you. Our final song today is uh, played and, and sung for us by Jean and John Spraggett, uh, perhaps with some help from Esther and who knows from Sam and Rose as well. Uh, the Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. Number 1008 in the Mission Praise Hymn Books.
A big thank you to everyone who's had any part in today's Gathered and Glued service of worship. And a particular thank you again to David Buckley for his digital sewing machine work of bringing all those things together into one whole. Thank you to everyone who's been involved. Some notices to draw to, to your attention for the week that's ahead. Firstly, a thank you from Linda Joyner, who wants to say uh, how grateful she is for the kind messages of support, the cards, and many people who have been praying for her uh, since her husband Mick died uh, just last week. Uh, Mick's funeral service will be on Tuesday the 26th uh, of, of May at uh, 10.30 at Stafford Crematorium. Uh, and though there will be very few people there, please do pray uh, for Linda and the rest of um, Mick's friends and family who will be uh, there to try and um, celebrate his life and give thanks to God for him. So please do pray for them on that occasion. Uh, secondly, uh, also on 26th of June, Tuesday, 7 o'clock in the evening, uh, our Zoom prayer meeting. Uh, and uh, the invitation for that, which you need to click on, will be on the Facebook page uh, and also available on uh, our website, uh, which has got a new section now uh, called uh, St Anne's During uh, Coronavirus. So please do have a look at that, with the, which has got details of all the different services that we're putting together. Uh, and if you click on the link there, you'll be able to join a, a half-hour prayer meeting uh, with others who have also done the same, and where we have a very short Bible reading and then spend about 20-25 minutes praying for either each other or for the needs that have been drawn to our attention or the wider community. We're in the period now between Ascension Day and Pentecost and churches throughout the UK and across the world have been invited to join in an initiative just called Thy Kingdom Come, praying that God's kingdom might come more fully in our communities and in our world and in particular sharing the good news of Jesus with people in our networks, friendship groups and families. And there are special prayers which are available if you want to use those. They'll be available on our website and also through the Facebook page. And there's a special Thy Kingdom Come website which is available through the Church of England's uh, website as well. So please do use those resources if you'd like to. And in the evening service this evening, which will be live streamed from St Anne's, we'll be using some of those uh, liturgies and some of those prayers uh, to help us pray for God's kingdom to come in our time and in our generation. The thoughts that go with that really are, are that we should think about people who we know, who we could pray for by name, who we would want to come to know the Lord Jesus themselves as their Saviour and Lord. So please do think who that might be for you uh, and uh, make this time between Ascension Day and Pentecost that time when we can pray that God would uh, break through in their lives and, and enable them to know that he loves them and that they uh, can respond and know him more uh, if they want to. Uh, some thoughts to do with uh, donations and giving to St Anne's. There will be a donations page uh, on our website soon. There already is one on the Facebook page. And for those of you who want to continue to give to the work of St Anne's, there's a space that you can do that online. Uh, please do have a look at those links. And hopefully if you want to make a donation, you'll be able to do that quite straightforwardly. To do with donations of a different kind, uh, our food bank... Uh, has been receiving a lot of donations and many people have been getting them either picked up or brought to uh, our home at 158A High Street. 
uh, which is fine and please do carry on to do that if you want to however we're finding that there's more people who might want to give it other ways and times and so uh, from this weekend onwards there's uh, food donation boxes available outside St Anne's and also outside St John's Church in Chase Terrace and if that's more convenient or you have neighbours and friends who want to make a donation to, to the Worker Food Bank with some uh, of the items that can be shared with people who need it then please do use either of those boxes if that's more helpful for you. I think that's all the notices that I need to draw your attention to. Other than to say, next Sunday is going to be Pentecost Sunday, the celebration and, and uh, refreshment day, if you like, where we ask for uh, a fresh filling of God's Holy Spirit. We remember the way that the Holy Spirit came upon the first disciples on the first day of Pentecost. And it's a wonderful celebration in the life of the church. And although we won't all be together in one place, we can all share in a refilling and a prayer for refilling of God's Holy Spirit. So in the week that's ahead, as well as the Thy Kingdom Come prayer initiative, let's take time to ask that we might be filled afresh with God's Holy Spirit so that we can know him more and that we can be more equipped to serve him in whatever way we're able to, whether we're at home or out and about or in whatever capacity we find ourselves. Well, as we pray, thy kingdom come, we're also praying, Holy Spirit, please come afresh into our lives, our church and our world. And a prayer of blessing as we draw our service to a close. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and with those for whom you care, now and always. Amen. Thank you very much for joining in our worship this morning. Um, I hope that you'll be able to, if you want to, to join in a live stream service this evening, which will be at six, six o'clock. Uh, from St Anne's Church and you can view that and be a part of it on the Facebook uh, page that St Anne's has. Uh, just go down and look for the live stream service uh, for six o'clock this evening on St Anne's Facebook page. I hope you've got a chance now to have a, a cup of tea or coffee and something, maybe a biscuit or two and uh, if you're able to please do share this service with anybody who you think would would be glad to to, to see it and take part in it uh, as, as it's uh, available freely to everyone who wants to, to benefit from it. Thank you for being involved and I hope your week ahead is a good one. God bless.